Hey everyone, I'm Ildi and this is Pooja from the Time Fix. <laughs> and we are on the Prosperity Show with Prosper. <laughs> and what we will talk about is how can you actually start your journey to be friends with your own time. And I am Pooja from the Time Fix and I'm the Habit Change Coach and I help you identify the habits that serve you and hopefully help you change those habits that make you more productive. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, and I'm your host, Prosper Taruvinga. And today, I have a remarkable lineup of two powerhouse women who are transforming the way we perceive and utilize time in business. They're Ildi Prosa, who's the founder and time mindset coach at Time Fix. And we were supposed to have Kirsten, but she didn't uh, show up on the call today. And we also have Pooja Kelka, who is the habit change a coach and today together they are here to help us create sustainable change in our productivity journey and enable a better life work harmony now ladies welcome to the show today thank you thank, thank you, you prosper <laughs> fantastic right so it was supposed to be the three of you but two is more than enough i'm gonna start maybe um with ildi who is the time mindset coach right now ildi as a time mindset coach and founder of the Time Fix, how do you actually help individuals build um, a map around their time so that they can live the life that they want and deserve? Oh, well, Prosper, the the, um, <laughs> the way that I landed in this space is a little bit of a, an interesting uh, story. And, and the reason why I do what I do and the way that I do it is because of that journey. Um, often people ask me why time management and how does someone become a time management specialist or or a, a time management coach and the reality is that uh, this is not something that you study it is something that uh, grows on you and you specialize in it as time goes by um, and uh, my journey was through a divorce where I had to become more organized and more on top of everything because suddenly I had to to take care of my two beautiful girls on my own. So I kind of had no choice but uh, pull my act together. And um, what I realized is that I'm missing the organized gene and this beautiful lady here can tell you that it's true. <laughs> uh, and... Um, I had to find creative ways to stay on top of, of everything. So this is how I started to read up on, on time management, on, on, on techniques, on uh, uh, ways to become more organized. And at the end of everything, I was still sliding back into my good old self after a, a little while. So I started to wonder why is that happening? And because of this journey of my own, um, I... Uh, looked into what's the missing link. So I bumped into behavioral science and an amazing uh, coach from New Zealand who who inducted me into the world of uh, human behavior and their, its effect on, on everything that we do. And from there, I got um, trained up in extended disc uh, because what I found is that you cannot manage time. You can only manage yourself. And the reality is that the key ingredient in productivity or in your productivity journey uh, is that relationship with your own time. And once you understand how you relate to your own time, that's when you can start making uh, change. And that's when you can start creating sustainable change to better productivity. So that's pretty much in a nutshell how you end up being a time mindset specialist. Because in the end, I don't want to teach anyone to manage time. If you need that, please use Dr. Google. It's more than enough. It's <laughs> the best tool ever that you can find out there. Uh, but if you really want to, to adopt those techniques, to use those tools in the best possible way and to, to make sustainable change in your productivity and in your habits, then let's have a chat because we definitely know a thing or two about uh, this topic. And uh, uh, with Pooja and Kirsten, we can really... Um, create a different way of looking at the world when it comes to productivity. 
Fantastic. And thank you so much for sharing that journey, because obviously a lot of people derive their jobs based on what they have learned. But you took your life story and made uh, something remarkable of it. And it's a positive thing that you also came across Pooja, who literally has helped you also with the habits because you did mention you didn't have a habit bone uh, inside of you. Now, Pooja, <laughs> obviously, since you have made this happen as a habit coach, how do you actually assist individuals in creating sustainable, positive change in their lives? So as you know, you can have a lot of techniques that you want to adopt and you want to make changes. And once you know that, it becomes really hard for people to identify where to start. Most of the times we want to make changes and we have this idea where we want to go. And it is such a massively big idea that it's hard to then break it down. One thing we as humans try to do is we want that that change to be in the exact way we want it to happen and what it looks like right from the get-go. And the reality of the matter is that that's not true. You have to start small. You have to take small steps and consistent steps to effect that change and to have that change come about. Now, what happens in the process is because we're trying to change too many things at the same time, we tend to uh, not remain consistent. We tend to give up on, on those steps because we have taken on too much. We're trying to swallow an entire elephant in a go. However, that does not work. We all know, let's just put it down in a more regular way. You can't even swallow an entire chicken in one go. So you <laughs> have to break it down. That's where I come into the picture. I help you look at some at things at a micro level. I help you take those tiny steps and make sure that you're taking them consistently. Put down a plan in place to make sure that you're taking making one change at a time and slowly build on that change because unless you do that it's really hard to to remain consistent a human brain can process only three things at a time honestly make can can take on only three projects at a time if you're trying to pile on too much you're just setting yourself up for failure so my idea is there is a plan i stay on top of the one thing that you promise yourself that you're doing and create that consistency around it. So that then it becomes a habit. Fantastic. And it just has that whole compound effect that uh, sort of happens as you stack on those habits. Now, you did mention something that is profound there that, you know, it takes a single bite at a time to sort of eat an elephant. Um, and some people might see things maybe on social media or see other companies doing, um, you know, certain things and think that maybe you can just jump on and um, work, you know, on, on things that are supposed to be uh, what's supposed to be happening in life. Now I'm going to ask this question to Ildi on the aspect of, knowing yourself okay can you share with us how understanding what you call your own unique time-centric archetype can actually impact our approach to time management oh that's a big question prosper that's a whole show <laughs> in that question um <clears throat> Well, here's the reality. We are all wired in different ways. And when it comes to perception of uh, of our time, uh, every single one of us perceives time in a different way. And Pooja will, would, would tell you right here that uh, there is no one space in our brain that would perceive time, even though it is the one thing that actually ties us together and keeps... Um, mm, Oh, threads, threads us up, if it if it makes sense. Uh, because whether you like it or not, time will pass. Whether you have done something with it or not, time will pass. So um, time is an interesting man-made made concept. And when it comes to perceiving it, we all have our own unique way of perceiving it. Um, and there's studies around it. And when we can go down the rabbit, rabbit hole of, of, uh, of talking about this topic, because it's quite fascinating. The truth is that the way that I see time pass is different to what you feel and, and uh, experience um, 
even on this call. Time does not pass the same way to, to, to every single one of us. We're just measuring it in the same way. And that's the huge difference. Once you start understanding that your relationship with your time is unique and different, um, and you start being curious about what does that exactly mean and how can you define it, that's when you can start creating uh, productivity hacks and productivity um, habits that will start helping you do what you need to do in order to create the life that you want and deserve so what that this what what this means is that some of us value time as a currency so these are your your people who who absolutely and totally um understand that sentence time is money you know how we were all raised with that <laughs> we've heard it at some stage uh the reality is that only a very small portion of us truly understand what that sentence means the rest of us we will kind of say oh yeah true and because the reality is that other things are more important than time to some human relationships are more important than time so everything that they will do will be prioritized around humans rather than 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 time is time still important yes it is but anything and everything that you will do if you are that person will be filtered through your relationships, to, through uh, what are you doing, how are you connecting, um, how are you relating to, to people. And then there's people who value a lot more a job well done than time itself. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. If anything, that's an absolutely and totally valuable uh, quality. Asset, quality. So really understanding first what is your own personal relationship with your time will define how can you redefine productivity and how can you bring your best version of yourself to the table instead of uh, just trying to live up to someone else's expectation fantastic that was a really elaborate uh, answer and i'm still hung up on the fact that you said each and every one of us, um, you know, perceives time differently. And you also then through spanning the work saying that we don't have space for time in our actual brains. And that really, um, you know, caught me by surprise. So that means individuals have a different perception of what is actually happening right now. I am having a good time talking to you girls, but I'm not quite sure if that's the same, um, <laughs> you know, across the board. But now... If I'm to ask Apuja then, can you just maybe elaborate on the concept that habits either save, serve us or they hinder our progress? And how can we actually identify and start changing these habits that actually hinder our productivity? Because you mentioned that this is something that is an individualistic uh, construct. So one thing I need to point out straight away, that there's no... I do not like the idea of good and bad habits. And I'm very grateful for you uh, to use the word habits that serve you. The reason is that the ideas of good and bad, first of all, people need to understand the ideas of anything that is good or bad is a societal construct. It is, a, it is something that the society has taught us that this is bad and that is good. However, what might be good for me might not be good for you and vice versa. So, um, Hence, we have to identify, we may have a, a whole set of habits around a lot of things, but over a period of time, these habits either serve us or do not serve us in that particular time period, for example. It's very important to sit down. The only way you can identify them is through introspection and through observation. And I know that it is really hard to observe something that you are subconsciously doing it's very hard to do that so you've got to bring it up into your conscious mind every time you think about something say for example you are procrastinating and you find yourself procrastinating at some exact time in the day for example at about 11 o'clock you find your focus going away and you find yourself procrastinating or scrolling through facebook or instagram that's when you stop and ask yourself, 
what am I using this habit for? Is it serving me right now or is it not serving me? Yes, I've created this habit, but what is it that habit really doing? Now, in my case, I know that and I'm coming from my own perspective at about 11 ish. I do if I'm sitting there for a long period of time, I start to get fidgety around that time and my mind will start to go. But that's come through knowing myself and knowing and observing that around that time, I need to get up and move a little bit, um, tinker with something else or or go and make myself a cup of coffee or bring myself a morning tea or something or just spend five minutes just looking at something other than work so that but that is a very pointed way of that is a very pointed habit I do it because that serves me that allows me to reset myself and come back to the work and to be able to focus but that is something that I have consciously made myself aware of that's a habit that serves me does that make sense? But oh, I've been very aware. I'm very aware of it. I'm very conscious of it. But that's what I mean. You have to be really conscious and understand yourself. And it only comes through observation. Absolutely. And, and I, I really like how you, you brought this um, <clears throat> answer home. Because when something is not serving you, it's actually costing you. And it it's really going, you know, if it goes undetected, like you said, if it's something that's working in your subconscious, you might not actually notice that this thing is actually uh, working against you. Now, I've got a question now for Prosper. Who Be before we do that, just a really, it's a groovy example, because um, uh, when it comes to, so that you understand what we mean, you know, we know that smoking is bad or we're be we've been told by media, by um, advertisements, by by everyone that that smoking is is not a healthy thing to do. But the reality is that sm uh, if smoking is going to actually give you an extra five minutes as a break, then smoking becomes a habit that actually serves you. And this is where the problem is that unless as a society change how we look at anything that is connected to that habit that habit can be perceived as as a as a habit that will serve you even though health wise we all know that it doesn't serve us Absolutely. does that make sense oh so fantastic it, yeah because it actually just leads into my next question and it still goes to you uh ildi because a lot of people are doing certain things just because it fits into what they're doing right now, but they're not looking at the cost of what it actually means. So if I could maybe see if I understood what you're talking about. So making a purchase of a television might be $2,000, all right? But if it is at the cost of you making $2 million in your business, that TV no longer costs you $2,000. It now costs you $2 million. Is that where where we are going with with all of this now now what would you say maybe are the actual sort of costs that you've come across that um associated with constantly trying to do maybe everything and not prioritizing uh effectively oh that's again a big 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 question um i always talk uh, about your real hourly rate and and uh um your hourly rate. And often I found, find that people are confusing the two, but maybe it is easier to, to, to approach um, this topic from a different perspective, which would be, let's look at interruptions because we were just talking about conscious interruptions, which, which, which leads into um, a well-planned day where you know that that conscious interruption will actually serve you. Now, the problem is that when it comes to interruptions, they can be the ones that serve you, which give you a nice break and a, a, a chance to reset. Uh, and, and then there's the ones that actually are sabotaging you. Now, the problem is with the ones that, that, that actually sabotage you because a lot of people um, are allowing interruptions to drive their days which means that they never have a chance to actually reach the focus to work status. What that means is that every time you work, you work at least 20 to 30% at less capacity than what you would be able to, to, to work 
uh, at. So that already costs you money. So if you look at a $300 uh, hourly rate, you're losing constantly at least $100 an hour for stop. But then there's the other uh, thing when you're not taking in consideration your behavioral makeup. And um, some people can refocus faster than others. The reality is that refocusing takes somewhere between seven to 26 minutes. If you are more behavioral uh, style wise or time archetypal uh, um, type wise, if you are on the fast lane, so you don't deal that much with details and so on, then you can look like you're multitasking. So you can actually go into that uh, focus state a lot quicker and you can pick up things a lot faster. But if you're on the systems and processes uh, kind of end where detail matters, where where you have to, to, to look at um, uh, um, not problem solving, but fixing things, um, then an interruption can cost you literally 26 minutes because it can take that long to refocus on the task that you were doing before you were interrupted. Now I'll leave you do the maths, half an hour um, just because you picked up the phone or half an hour just because someone came and asked you if you want a coffee, uh, how much time are you effectively losing and what does that cost your business? And if you're only thinking about, I don't know, six interruptions like this, that's... um, three hours a day, if you are at that end of of the spectrum. What that means is that you're losing $1,000 roughly in productive time. So it's really worth thinking, how do you structure your day? How do you take care of the people in your team? How do you protect their time? Sometimes it's not even protecting your own time. It's about protecting your your people's time. It's about understanding how they work. It's about uh, making sure that if you have a person who needs variety in their work work uh, day, they can get that. Yeah. Uh, or or if uh, if they need to be left alone so that they can go into that deep state and smash out work for one and a half hours then you can you need to be able to facilitate that kind of need to 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 focused work so understanding what the cost is is important because in the end that's where you regain a lot of time and that's where you uh you can uh, put more money back into your pocket and that's where you you can nurture the people around you and you can help them bring the, their best version uh to the table i don't know anyone who would go to work just so that they go to work. Everyone wants to perform. Everyone wants to bring their best to the table. It's really just uh, facilitating that and nurturing, nurturing the people in your team, nurturing the people around you, uh, making sure that uh, you support others around you because that's how you will be supported too. Fantastic. I like that. And obviously you guys have a solution to this uh, in the way that you end up working with people. Now, I'm just going to direct this question to uh, Pooja there. What what are some of the effective sort of strategies or techniques that you use uh, to help individuals adopt um, new habits or maybe break the old ones that they're already having? Well, the first thing, obviously, is to uh, help them identify what it is that serves them and does not serve them. A lot of the times, people will struggle with identifying that in in itself. So the first step is to be able to identify that. And that's a very long drawn out process and can be quite painful as well and can be quite uh, confronting, to be honest. So it can, um, it takes people a long time to admit to themselves that something that they do is not to their best interest. If you, if you know human beings automatically start defending what they do and they'll find all kinds of ifs and buts and whys and whatever is to defend that, it's breaking those, those barriers down and getting them to understand that, you know, um, there is no judgment in the process. It's about just identifying what it is that does not serve you. So that is the first step. And that takes a very long time. And from there on, we have to find out what are the cues and triggers that triggers that particular behavior. 
and what it is from there on then it's 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 mainly the process of elimination into understanding what it is that we can change is it the trigger that triggers that particular behavior that needs to be changed or is, is it the behavior itself that needs to be changed so it's it's the entire process is through consultation with a particular person and through conversations through helping them understand what it is that they can flip or establish or what can they adopt to start having those habits that will serve them but it's it all starts with introspection it all starts with accepting that something has to change because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again then the change does not happen something something has to be let go something has to be adopted in order for that to happen but it all starts with a process of introspection and a, a process of elimination and a process of identification of what it is that they really need to change and right. that can be very hard i mean i'm not saying it's easy it's very hard to do and if you think you can do it alone think again because human beings have angels and devil sitting on each shoulder <laughs> and in these cases the devil will always take over <laughs> fantastic i like i like your analogies there uh, puja I, i bet your clients always have a a, a laugh <laughs> talking to you now while we're at this particular sort of juncture i just wanted to um obviously we wouldn't be talking about a time productivity show without even mentioning the already known um customs of pomodoro you know of the um, you know you're always on time and and that whole scenario where if you're in australia people just say yeah she'll be all right mate you know and then just let <laughs> things just let things happen on their own i'm going to ask um ildi to sort of uh, lead with this um answer and if puja want to um you know elaborate on this that would be also good now how do you maybe address the belief that there's that one size fits all solution to time management. You know what I mean? People clock in at eight and then they have to go out at five. And um, why is that really important to recognize individual differences? Um, and while you're at it, please let us know how people can get a hold of, um, you, you know, you guys so that they can actually start on their journey to, to work with you. Oh, that's a big one. That's a very big question. Um, uh first of all few parts to it though yeah <laughs> um they have to have a conversation with us um because we do bring a different kind of perspective when it comes to productivity and what we found that uh we can create profound change even if you are the most organized person on earth because sometimes having a fresh perspective on what you do can help you in finding the gaps that you don't see uh, and, and this is where, where I always say that uh, often when I introduce myself, the first thing people say, oh, time management, fantastic. Everyone needs that. The reality is that when, when, when you say that um, time management is very, very personal and it's almost like starting to talk about uh, your underwear size when it comes to, to, <laughs> to, to talking about your time management habits or what you do in that. Yes, I know it's funny, but it's true. It's true. Everyone needs <laughs> one, but talking about it is a whole different ball game. So um, we, we always say that just because you know that you need it, it doesn't mean that you know uh, what to do with what it. What to do with it. And 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 it's uh, it's just one of those things that let's have a conversation. Honest to God, no one walks away from us without getting at least a couple of tips on on how to improve or 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 some ideas of of what what's worth looking into a little bit deeper uh, and so on. Uh, and you can find us very easily. We have a website. It's quite easy. TheTimeFix.com.au. You can find us on social media uh, as the Time Fix. And of course, we're always happy to connect and and uh, have a chat. Uh, find us on LinkedIn. Find us on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yes. <laughs> Find us on um, on various. Um, we are on various directories. So if you if you just find us, um, the time fix. I'm sure a lot of the links should come up if their SEOs are right. <laughs> uh, and then um, and then um, just 
pure and simple, uh, throw us um, an email, send us an email, info at the timefix.com.au, more than happy to connect. But another thing I would like to add is um, more pointedly to your question, um, people, people think that a change can be made. Um, I'm very uh, good at adopting change and I will look at all of these influences online and I will just follow what they do. Well, what they tell you is what has worked for them it does not mean it's going to work for you. So being honest to yourself and telling yourself that, you know, you need help, that's the first starting point. May I jump in there and just say, you, you mentioned the Pomodoro technique there. Yeah. That's probably one of the classic examples, examples. you know, the 25 minutes focus time, five minute break. Now here's the, the trick. If you are, um, we call it the time bender, uh, who has a very special relationship with, with with time, and well, time does not exist for them really. Uh, it's just a concept. <laughs> uh, then twenty five minutes of focused work can sound like mission impossible. This is not what they do. They they love variety. They need variety to thrive and to to find the best solutions possible. So the twenty five minutes might be way too long. And I'll take now this to the other end where we're talking about those people who, have, who love systems and, and, and processes and we call them the, the time validators. Um, with them, the 25 minutes is too short. So to them, it takes about that long to, to even get in the zone and uh, uh, fully access their genius zone. So the Pomodoro technique is a fabulous concept, but not for everyone. Absolutely. The idea is great, but you need to adapt it to who you are and how do you prefer to work. If you need more, then make it 45 minutes and then a five to 10 minute break. And if, you, if you're on the other end and you need more variety, then make it 10 minutes and then a shorter two minute quick scroll, uh, you know, fill up your cup of, of variety and go back to do what you were doing. So it's really understanding that these tools that you see and uh, and are called classic time management tools, in the end, they are just tools. They are as good as you are going to actually make the most of them. So we, we always say that uh, just because you have a good tool, it doesn't mean that you know what to do with it. Absolutely. That is actually a really good um, way to conclude right there. But while I was um, looking you 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 girls up, um, I come across an interesting um, aspect, especially Pooja. Apparently, you touched grass, and that profoundly changed um, your perception. So I hear about you you you've had a unique experience of touching Kuyong grass lawn, and uh, oh, and, and how does that, that sort of tie into <laughs> your work? Um, as a habit change coach oh not at all not at all that comes from my um great great love for tennis right. and my great great love of Roger Federer right and that it comes from there and has it while well I'm I'm quite passionate about what I'm passionate about so <laughs> when I go into Kuyong tennis club one time I was like oh my god I, I had reached Mecca um, cause <laughs> that was, that was my feeling, but it has, it has seriously nothing to do with me becoming a habit change coach. coach. It has come purely from my love for the game and my love for the great man, um, uh, Roger Federer. And I knew he had walked those halls and I knew I was walking on his footsteps. I would never have washed my feet if I were bare feet. <laughs> but um that was it just came from there. It's honestly Prosper has nothing to do with me becoming a habit change coach. Um, um I would not attribute that to that at all. The passion is there. The so you can see what's coming. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So if Roger Federer is watching this show right now, he he should just know he's got a fan for life now oh yes i've 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 wept with him i've laughed with him i have uh danced with him i have <laughs> rejoiced at the birth of his children i've 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 kind of uh, uh short of being a stalker i've i've 
I've gone through every stage of his life. Puja, that way. Like, we're getting so, into that legal <laughs> I'm going into that legal ground. So whatever I say right now does not mean anything. It's just metaphorical. <laughs> this is Rayma. Fantastic. Now, lastly, <laughs> you have a yes. black belt in karate. Is that um for people to is that to whoop people into submission so that they actually get productive? Or <laughs> actually you know um you know just just tell us about your experience in 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 that and how it relates to your work in helping others uh with their um mindset especially when it comes to time Ross, but that was an open secret <laughs> well you told me uh, <laughs> um well anyone who digs a little bit will find uh that um i never thought about that but i think what karate teaches you is um, how to step on that road of self-discovery, how to learn to repeat the same thing again and again and again until it becomes perfect. Um, martial arts in general, I think, are an amazing um, platform because it's 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 not a sport uh, really. Martial arts are so much more than 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 just a sport. Um, anyone who who dips their toes into martial arts will be hooked for life, whether you practice or not throughout your life. Um, the concepts, the way that you you learn to learn and the way that you learn to improve yourself and and you learn that every detail counts uh, is is staying with you for life. And I think, that pretty much guided me throughout my whole life. And even though at the moment I, I don't practice, um, it, I still practice. <laughs> uh, maybe not physically, but when it comes to finding the details, uh, going as deep as, as you need to go and uh, uh, perfecting in a way that you're not seeking the absolute perfection is probably the biggest art because originally martial arts is about perfection is about satisfying that need to to that one perfect um kick but but in that process you learn that there's so much more to it than just that end goal the the journey that you take to get there is so much more important and i think that's that's what what it is so we always say that uh, um we are passionate about helping you change your journey through making friends with your own time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, I really and one of my favorite sentences, Prosper, is um, marry the process and not the outcome because the outcome will come. If you, if you pursue the outcome, Yes, there has to be a goal, an outcome goal. However, if you're stuck on just that and forget that there's a process that needs to be followed to get there, then that outcome becomes all the more out of reach. So marry the process. Fantastic. That is such a wonderful statement because um, another version of it is just trust the process, you know, where you're literally doing what needs to be done, the cadence of being there the habits that are needed for you to actually become as productive as you want to because people think that they just wake up one day and all of a sudden they've mastered any aspect of their life but it doesn't work like that and according uh, to Pooja right there it's a process and that's the reason why she has been following uh, Roger Federer it's not an event it's, <laughs> it's, a, process. it's a process it's, it's a, a process, process. by the now, way Talking about processes, Prosper, um, I really have to, to to say that we are a trio. Uh, and, yeah. and though Kirsten is not on the screen for various re reasons today, um, she she's the grounding block for us because the two of us can take off and fly off like some helium balloons uh, and someone needs to actually hold the string at the end of it. And Kirsten uh, in, our, in our trio is that person who who pulls us back down, who who grounds us, who who puts those systems and processes in motion behind us, who 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 stops us on our track and says, ah, stop right there, go back five steps. What were you saying? <laughs> and as much as it sounds annoying from time to time, um, that actually helps us 
gain clarity and yeah. and uh, it 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 just helps. It grounds us. It grounds us. It it really makes a, a huge difference in in what we do. And you might not see her at front uh, delivering content or um, teaching at this stage, uh, but all her work in the background is a testimony to everything that we do. And um, there's a reason why we chose. Um, to be a crowd <laughs> you know they say two is a partnership three is a crowd but we love our crowd because this crowd makes us great and uh, will take us where we need to go speaking of the crowd and i really um you know appreciate you bringing that up um i had prepared a few questions for kirsten but one of them was how she had worked with richard branson now is that something that you guys can speak to and how that sort of experience that um she's had has actually shaped the way she approaches um her work if if any of you guys can take that question i think she um she was trained by richard branson in in her in her profession in the past as uh in the travels she was in the travel industry and she was trained by him so clearly that has made a big impact on her because uh, being in in the presence of greatness is something that people do not forget and it it kind of rubs off on you and being trained by the great man himself, obviously he may have imparted a lot of insight to her and with her and must have shared a lot of his life's journey with he, with her as well. So it was a part of her uh, profession in the past where she was trained by him when she was working in in um, Greece, I believe. I think, yeah, yeah, in Greece as as a travel uh, in the travel industry. But here's the thing: I think one of the main things that she learned through that process is to believe. And if anyone, she demonstrated that over 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 the past. Uh, I met Kirsten almost nine years ago, well, eight years ago now, uh, and uh, we did stick with each other uh, on this journey, helping each other on this journey. But Kirsten had a belief in in me and and uh, in in what i represented back then as a solopreneur um in a way that i think no one else believed like 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 that in me so definitely if anything she 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 learned to to trust and believe and and uh, and and be loyal pretty much yeah, and to exactly. and to uh love the process fantastic <laughs> and, and, if and anything Kirsten. she's the process <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in any case if Kirsten you're watching this part right now just know that you are treasured and the value that you bring to this trio is a second to none and for those that are watching I hope you're going to be creating sustainable change in both your personal and professional lives and if you're going to be following um you know the girls at the time fix they would definitely help you uh, create a supportive, strong, um, you know, business that is actually respecting everyone's personal time and the time um, of those that actually bring productivity into our lives. Now, help me thank these girls for uh, their time. And also, um, hopefully you can connect with them and learn more about what it is that they are doing. Thank you once again. Thank, Thank you, you, Prosper. Thank you, Prosper. And connect with us at the time fix.